Hey guys, how's it going? This is Nat Nader. We all have that one story, don't we? The one you grow up thinking about, but never actually grow the balls to tell anyone. Well, this is my story. I don't know what I'm hoping to accomplish by telling you. Maybe I'm just looking for someone to tell me that I'm not insane. Or maybe once I put it on paper it will... Hell, I don't know. Just... Someone read this. Just please. Let me give you a little background. 20 years ago when I was 8 years old, still living with my mum, my friend Dave and I decided that we would brave the house. Now, the house was an abandoned two-story home that had been empty going on 10 years, save for the occasional drug abuser that would sleep in it. However, that's not what made this particular house special. The standing rumour is what made it interesting. For as long as I can remember, adults in my neighbourhood had told us, the children, that it was haunted. I'm sure it was just their way of getting us not to play in it though. Regardless of that, the house had a sort of ominous aura that hung around it. Just looking at that decaying building would give you the shivers. Although despite our inherent fear of the place, Dave and I decided we would explore this house. We would become legends in our own right. At least, that's what we hoped. It was Tuesday all those years ago, well past midnight, and both of our parents had fallen asleep. The two of us decided we would sneak out. You know, use the night as our cover. We agreed it would be best to meet up in front of the house. Still, I wish we hadn't agreed to do it. There I was, alone, waiting in front of the house for my friend, but I couldn't help but feel small when I looked at it. It might have been old, and the wood may have been rotting, but man did it look enormous. I bet even adults felt dwarfed by it. To keep myself from chickening out, I decided to think about something else while I waited. It was a little cold that night, which was the typical weather after a hard rain. Ah, crap, I muttered, noticing the mud that covered my shoes. I should have paid more attention to where I was stepping. Mum is going to kill me when she... My voice trailed off when I heard a dull thud from behind me. Sounded like someone knocked on a door. Was... Was it the house? Or was I just imagining things? I spun around expecting to see a hairy monster behind me. Instead, it was just the house. Broken windows, splintered wood, and roof that had more than a few holes in it. Just the usual. Nothing to panic about. I should have been relieved, but I found myself slightly shaken. Soon I would be stepping into one of the most feared places in our neighborhood. I wasn't even inside yet, and I could already feel the slight tremor in my hand. Before I could reconsider the mission, 
Dave arrived. I quickly stuffed my hands into my pockets to hide the quiver. I could see his small figure bouncing up and down. The little jokester was skipping across the street. My fears were immediately replaced with giddy laughter. (laughs) You're such a clown, I managed to say in between my giggles. We both reached out and shook hands, like his father had taught us. Luckily, he didn't notice the tremor. Dave used his hands to smooth back his black hair, kind of like a greaser would in a cliché movie. You ready for this? He nodded toward the door. Typical Dave. He always tried to look cool, whether it be riding his bike with no hands or sneaking into an abandoned house. He never failed to give off the, I'm a badass vibe. I tried my best to sound nonchalant. Only if you are, Davy. The comment awarded me a slight snicker. Dave hated it when I called him Davy. He said it sounded girly, and that's exactly why I used it. Rather than shoot a retort at me, he simply nudged me toward the house, and we began walking to the door. Our small feet made quiet echoes in the street. I was worried we might wake someone. If we had any doubts about what we were doing, that moment would have been the right time to bail out. Of course, as per the norm, stupidity got the better of us. The second our feet hit the old steps, we knew there would be no turning back. Think we should knock? Dave joked. Seeing him act all cool somehow gave me courage, and so I knocked. What I heard made the hair on my neck stand at attention. The same thud I heard from earlier reverberated through the door when my knuckles landed. I gulped loudly, but maintained an overall calm composure. The two of us breathed in deeply, turned the doorknob, and pushed the door open. We received a long, drawn-out creak as payment. I thought I was going to pee my pants, and Davy looked like he was about to shit a brick. Somehow, we managed to keep our undies clean. It was dark. Real dark. Neither one of us had brought a flashlight. We didn't want to accidentally wake up a neighbor by shining a light in their house. Given the circumstances we decided it was best to use moonlight. Our eyes were met with a dimly lit house. It took a minute to adjust to. The house was littered with trash, covered in graffiti, and was seemingly falling apart all over. And yet it didn't seem as frightening as we were led to believe. Sure, the darkness made it look spooky, But as I looked at the cracked marble floor, I couldn't help but be reminded of my own house. Huh, this isn't so bad. It was me who broke the silence. Do you think the ghost will be pissed that we tracked mud in the house? Dave laughed and pointed at the floor. Little footprints followed us all over the house. Remind me to clean my shoes before I go back home. I giggled at the thought. Here we are in the big spooky house, cracking jokes about muddy shoes. It was all fun and games. After familiarizing ourselves with the first floor, which consisted of an empty living room, 
A kitchen with rotted food in the cupboards. A bathroom with a disgusting toilet. And a curious looking locked door. We decided to explore the second floor. We ascended the stairs together, Dave leading with his brave face on. The wooden stairs were old, much like the rest of the house, and each step left us wondering if it would collapse beneath us. Think the ghost is up there? I asked, half sincere. Dave chuckled at the question. Ghosts probably aren't even real. We had reached the end of the stairs and were on the top floor. It wasn't a big second story. Two hallways, one to the right and one to the left. Four rooms for the two of us to explore. Let's go left, Dave suggested. So we went left, and into the first door on the right. The door was already open, so we just peeked our heads in. The first thing I noticed was the hole in the roof. Moonlight was shining through it, and it gave us a faint light to survey the room with. It wasn't a very kind room. Actually, it was kind of like my room probably big enough to have a bed, dresser, maybe a desk could fit in too. We couldn't see inside of the closet though. The light didn't quite reach it. Dave looked at me and I looked at him. I bet there's something cool in there. Let's go look. Dave suggested with a mischievous smile. Not sure what we were hoping for exactly. A treasure in a closet or something? Just before I stepped into the room, I heard the familiar thud noise. The one that was made before, and when I knocked on the door. My heart felt like it was going to stop. The noise was distant but there was no mistaking it. My first instinct was to run, but I couldn't leave Dave behind. He of course paid no mind to it. Hell, he was already in the room walking toward the closet, and it was at that moment that things went to hell. I never even had the chance to warn him. The second Dave stepped foot into the center of the room, there was a frightening crack. He didn't have time to react. The wood splintered, the ground beneath him gave way, and he fell through the floor. I nearly jumped out of my skin. Everything in front of me was crashing down. The wood was so old and decayed that it couldn't even support Davy. Dust and dirt flew everywhere. By the time it was over, it was hard to breathe. Wait. Dave didn't make a sound. Did he die on impact? Was he okay? My mind had never raced so fast. Dave! I shouted in between coughs. Dave, are you okay? I repeated the question a few more times and waited. After an agonizing minute, I got a response. I'm okay, he answered weakly. Not a scratch on me. I peered down the large hole that was now in front of me. Dust was everywhere, but as it cleared I could see him more clearly. There was Dave, and he was completely intact. And guess where I am? I sighed deeply, glad that he hadn't lost his sense of adventure. 
I'm in the locked room. Get down here, I'll open the door for you. He wiped the dirt off of his forehead and motioned for me to come down. I obediently turned around and headed for the stairs, preferring to take the safe route down. As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I noticed something odd. Were those big footprints always there? Two frighteningly large footprints had been left on the floor. There was something odd about them though. They didn't look human. Too big. Four toes and they were round. My imagination quickly got the better of me and I could feel the panic rising quickly. I was starting to feel nauseous. Even more so when I realized the footsteps were leading to the room that Dave was in. I glanced at the front door. It was open. I could leave right now, run home and tell my parents to call the police. We didn't have cell phones back then. But I didn't do any of that. I just kept walking toward the locked room. The door was open, and I could see shadows dancing on the door frame. There were two shadows, one big, one small. The larger shadow was pounding into the smaller one. I could hear the blows landing. Thump. Thump. Thump thump. Each time it hit, Dave would whimper. I was frozen in place. The door was only a few feet away, but I couldn't bring myself to take another step. I wanted to save my friend, but I just couldn't move. I could only stand there and watch the shadows. Please, stop. Smash. The last hit was harder than any of the other ones. I could hear the bones break from where I was standing. Dave's shadow stopped moving. The larger shadow picked up the frail little body and began slashing into it with what looked like a blade. A dark liquid splashed onto the door and started oozing toward the floor. I wanted to puke. I could feel hot liquid running down my pants. Must have been scared enough to piss myself. I looked at the floor and saw the puddle that I had made. It was time to leave. I took one last glance at the door, and what I saw when I looked up still haunts me today. A large humanoid figure stood in the doorway, holding Dave's body. It was too dark to see it clearly, but I got a peek at its eyes. Its big blue eyes. Big and blue like the ocean, and the waves were rippling with rage. I wanted to leave. No, I needed to leave. But my legs refused to move. They were anchored to the floor. Fear had stopped them completely. My heart, on the other hand, was moving. It was moving very fast. Reluctantly, I stood there, staring at the monster that was holding my dead friend. It didn't take long for our eyes to meet. We stood there in an eternal staring contest. I was too afraid to blink. I remember thinking that if I closed my eyes, I would never open them again. It was only after two long minutes that I could finally feel my legs again. 
so I slowly took a step back. The monster mimicked my movements by stepping forward each time I took a step back. My heart sunk when I realized what it was doing. Every molecule in my body was telling me to turn around and sprint. But could I really outrun this monstrosity? No, there was no way. I decided to keep my pace, buy myself time until I got to the door. Once we reached the living room, it dropped Dave, outstretched its arms toward me, and grinned. It was the single most wicked thing I had experienced in my life. The monster's grin, from corner to corner, reached both of its eyes. His teeth were long, white, like a shark. We were almost at the door, but he was no longer mimicking my steps. For each step I took, he took two. Step by step, he was closing the gap. The moonlight from the window shined on his outstretched arm. Its hand was human-like, only there was something off about it. The nails were long, the skin was rotted, and some of the flesh looked like it had been scratched off. It was enough to make me dizzy. Soon, I could hear it breathing. Each breath was labored. It was almost wheezing. One more step, and I would see its entire body in the moonlight. I didn't want that. The thought alone was enough to make me turn, grab the doorknob, throw it open, and rush out of the house. I didn't dare look over my shoulder until there was some distance between the two of us. I expected to turn around and see the monster lumbering after me, but surprisingly it wasn't. The monster never came out of the house. It didn't chase me down the street. It didn't rip me to pieces. It just stood there, on the porch, waving goodbye, its malformed hand slowly rocking back and forth, with the same deranged smile on its face. A few days later, when the police report was made public, my parents told me that the monster was just a hobo on drugs. The police had found Dave's body next to a dead homeless man. Apparently, he had overdosed shortly after I had left. I try to tell myself that I was just imagining things, and that there was no monster. But I don't know what to believe. I've been thinking about it a lot lately. I can't get that fucking smile out of my head. I'm done with this. If I write any more, I'll start having nightmares again. Food's here anyway. I just heard a knock at the door.